Let us proceed to the first ayah of the third section. Ya yuhanna sobudu rabbakum al-nadhi khalaqakum wal-nazina min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. Instead of giving you the translation, let me give you the introduction to the third and fourth sections. These two sections of this surah, as I told you in the beginning, they give you a gist and a summary of number one, the call of Quran. What's the call of Quran? Number one. And number two, the basic philosophy of Quran. All these subjects have been discussed in detail in the Makki surahs. But you know, as I told you, that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a Madani surah in the very beginning of the Mushaf, the gist and summary of that Makki Quran is given here in two sections. Very important. What's the basic call of Quran? That we will find in the third section, third ruku. What's the basic philosophy of Quran? What's the position of man in this universe? On what basis that position has been given to him? And what is the struggle of between evil and good that is going on throughout the history? The struggle within a man, within the personality. There is a struggle always going on within our personalities between good and evil. Something is taking us towards evil and something wants to take us towards good, towards virtue. This is the struggle. A war is going on. In the inner, you know, battlefield of our personalities. And then there is a war going on, on the outside world. There is the philosophy of history of Quran, that this is a struggle between the forces of evil and forces of virtue and good. There is the forces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on one side, and the forces of shaitan on the other side. Dunya ko hai phir maar ka ruho badan pesh, iblis ne phir apne darindon ko ubhara, Allah ko paamar diye momin pe bharosa, Iblis ko Europe ki machine ka sahara. So that struggle is going on. Satira kar raha hai azal se time rose. Chirage Mustafavi se sharare bulahbi. That struggle has been going on. But what is the basis of that struggle? That will be discussed in the fourth section, inshallah. Billahi mina shaitan ir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ya yuhanna sobudu rabbakum al ladhi khalakakum wal ladhi na min kablikum la allakum tattakun. الذي جعل لكم الأرض فراشا والسماء بناء وأنزل من السماء ماء وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون صدق الله العظيم رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل اللقدة من لساني يفقه قالي اللهم ربنا علمنا رشدنا وعزنا من شرور أنفسنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا التباه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى آمين يا رب العالمين Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are now beginning with the third section of Surah Al-Baqarah. You might have noted that the two basic terminologies I am keeping as such, I am not translating them. Ayah or ayat, it cannot be translated. Surah, it cannot be translated. But Ruku, I am translating into sections. As I told you, this terminology was not present in the times of the Prophet ﷺ as well as the days of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. It was a later day edition. So we can translate. We can adopt another words also. But please note one thing, that these paras or parts, you know, I am translating ajza also into parts. Ruku's sections. As far as the Ruku's go, this division seems to be very connected logically with the subject of that those ayat. Very clear distinction, very correct distinction. But as regards the paras or the parts, you know, it's a very, what word I should say, I, I, I can't decide. But it's not at all a correct division into paras. Because even the surahs have been divided. 
and we find you know at least in one place in surah al hijr one ayah is in the 13th part and the rest of the whole surah is in the 14th part so it's not a very good division but as far as the rukus are concerned the division is very correct and logical now this third section or third ruku of surah al baqara as i told you gives us a gist or summary of the call of the quran what's the dawa of quran first of all ya ayyuhan nas note that this call is to the whole of humanity ya ayyuhan nas we must note in the makki surahs when allah subhanahu wa taala describes the history of most of the messengers of allah we find the words ya qaum ya qaum ibadullah oh my people oh my nation be obedient to allah serve allah be bondsmen to allah but this is the distinction between the message of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the message of the former messengers that they, that was directed to their nations only and this message is addressed to the whole of humanity ya ayuhan nas ubudu rabbakum ibadah obedience with love both things must be together in the to convey the sense of ibadah total obedience to someone out of extreme love for him if the obedience you know is not out of love is due to some pressure then you know is obedience only not ibadah if a nation conquers another nation that conquered nation is obedient to the conqueror but they are not doing ibadah to them the ibadah is when the obedience is total number 1 and it is from the depths of the hearts out of extreme love for someone so if someone loves allah subhanahu wa taala from the depth of his heart and as a result of that love he obeys him in all his all the aspects of his life then he is doing the ibadah he is fulfilling the purpose of his creation because this subject has been very extensively discussed in the makki surahs in surah zariyat we find wama khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun i have not created men and jinn except only to obey me to worship me to love me to be bondsmen to me to serve me this is the sole purpose of the creation of the jinns as well as the humans and we find that all the messengers of allah subhanahu wa taala they convey the same message to their nation ya qaum ibadullah ma lakum min ilahin ghayru all the messengers this was the common call of all the messengers the, that is the call of quran the same is the call of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the only difference is that they were addressing their nations only and this prophecy of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this prophethood of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is universal to the whole of humanity but the essence is the same oh badullah be bondsmen to allah obey allah in all aspects of your life individual as well as collective every aspect of life should be governed by the law of allah subhanahu wa taala allazi khalaqakum who has created you he is your creator he is your rabb your sustainer oh badu rabbakum be bondsmen to your sustainer to your master to your lord allazi khalaqakum and not only that he is your sustainer he is your creator wal ladina min qablikum and he created those also who were before you because people generally tend to follow their forefathers because our forefathers believed in such things we also believe in such things because our forefathers were doing like that we are also doing like that we have to follow our forefathers no they were also created by allah subhanahu wa taala just as you are the creators of allah subhanahu wa taala they were also the creators if you can commit mistake they, they could also commit mistake so not to follow them but you follow the directions of allah the guidance given to you by your lord your master your sustainer your creator lal lakum tattaqun the same word again taqwa so that you may become pious you may become god fearing no so that you can save yourself save yourself from the displeasure of allah save yourself from the punishment of the day of judgment save yourself from the fire of hell lal lakum tattaqun allazi ja'ala lakum al-ard who is that allah about whom you are required to obey 
and to be bondsman. He is he, Alladhi, Jala Lakumul Arda Firashan, who made this earth for you as a resting place, just as a bedding. You know, first, so he has made this earth for you as a bedding. And then he raised the canopy of sky over you. And he sent down water, rain from the sky. And then he created from the earth, brought, brought out from the earth. The provisions for you in the form of the fruits and the grains. So don't declare, don't accept with Allah anyone as rival, as equal. Nobody is equal to Allah. Nobody is like Allah. Nobody is rival to Allah. The bondsman, you have to be for him only. Nobody else. All humans are equal. You should be all bondsmen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and brothers to each other. At least you don't do it knowingly. Maybe a person is mistaken and mistakenly he is doing something that is something else. But knowingly, intentively, with intentions at least you shouldn't do it.